It's Galaxy S24 Ultra Time. A Galaxy Unpacked has been announced January 17th. You could get your pre-pre-order. You could reserve your pre Whatever it is, it helps the channel. Click the link in the description. There is a savings. I think it's like 50 bucks, something like that. And sometimes you get additional accessories and savings thrown in as well. So click the link in the description. Sign up. Does help the channel and save yourself a couple bucks as well. But we January 17th, S24 Ultra will be officially announced. We should get the release of the device a week or two after that. Some interesting things about it. Most of it's pretty chalk. You're getting the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, X amount of RAM, X amount of storage, whatever the case it usually is with the Samsung Galaxy flagship. That's what you'll get pretty much the best of the best all the way down the line. One thing that I thought was different or was going to be different this year, it seems like, if you believe the rumors, that Samsung has kept the 10x optical periscope zoom. I thought they were going to move away from that. Thought they were going with the 5x. Personally, I get a lot more use out of my 5x on my Pixel devices than I ever did out of the 10x here. I don't use space zoom. You know, I, space zoom apparently is coming back 100x, whatever. I, you, you want to say you use it on occasion? For me, it's a gimmick. The, uh, Samsung doesn't need to do that. They're top of the food chain on the Android side. Their phones are $7,500. They're not some uh, whippersnapper trying to break down the gates that needs things like uh, 100, 100x zoom and stuff like that to try to make a name for themselves. I, 100x zoom, uh, unless you're doing space shots, space, whatever, the moon shots that turned out to be bogus anyway, or AI enhanced, uh, whatever you want to say there, I don't need it. I get the pixel zoom. I think the 5x is perfect. You get nice crisp, uh, crisp shots. The lens works well. I would have liked to have seen Samsung kind of go back from that. And the one reason why... I thought that they might kind of back off that a little bit and go to a 5X, is that you're seeing a lot less of the camera systems being highlighted. In fact, when the presentation is made, Galaxy Unpacked, I would be shocked if the significant portion of it wasn't dedicated to AI, which everyone laughed about when Google said, well, we're going to do all this AI stuff. But then Snapdragon, uh, Qualcomm, uh, Qualcomm came out and said the Snapdragon is going to be doing all of these things with AI, so that's why you're going to have that. So now it's okay, you know, AI, Galaxy AI is going to be here. Unfortunately, some of the rumors were that Galaxy AI, and this is a couple different sources now, not one, recent articles as well, saying that part of the Galaxy AI experience might be paywalled. That would be very disappointing if that were the case. I would, I would be shocked if that's the case. I would be shocked that I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be shocked from a marketing standpoint because you have a situation where Google's giving you the works. Now, you could say, well, it'll work on the S24, it'll work on the S24 Plus, it'll work on the S23 Ultra, so they won't gatekeep device-wise that the way that Google does with the Pixel devices. That could be something. So you could say, well, okay, they charged me uh, five bucks a month for this chatbot AI thing that they got, the Galaxy AI feature, but it works on my S23 lineups, it works on my S22 lineups, some of the computational stuff, yeah, it takes place on the device, but also over the cloud, some of the stuff, whatever, I get access to it. That could be really the only way I could see marketing-wise that Samsung could even try to get away with paywalling stuff. So I really, really hope that that's the one thing they don't do. Some of the AI stuff seems interesting. They're going to have, the, they say it's going to be throughout the entire system, live translation, the chat bot that we talked about, obviously the computational photography stuff, they're going to go heavy into that. You're going to have all types of stuff through One UI 6.1, I believe, is going to be the release version that has it there. So that's all stuff that's interesting, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, Samsung with stuff, you know, they have a kind of a mixed history as far as implementing stuff. Everybody knows about Bixby, they still haven't quite gotten Bixby to where it needs to be versus the other voice assistants. So will they be able to figure that out in a way that's uh, worth paying for if they make you pay for it or worth having on the device yet to be seen interesting I, it is interesting that that's kind of where the battlefield is going to shift to it's not cameras anymore it's not build quality it's not display since pixels kind of put that to bed with the super actual display the next kind of uh, selling point that these phones are going to hammer on are going to be is going to be ai and the different features and capabilities of the ecosystem and it it's kind of a scary time for samsung because if they get that wrong, you know, it, it's a new new thing. You know, Google's got a little bit of a head start. If they get it wrong, you know, no matter how great the hardware is, and it's phenomenal hardware, they're always doing the best screens, the best spec, whatever else, that's fine. But if you want to charge that top-tier dollar, 
and you're not offering the same AI experience as the competition is for less, in the case of the Google Pixel and some of these other devices, well, then you're going to have a problem. So I'm excited for the S24 Ultra. I think it's going to be a great device. I love the fact that they've gone away from the curve design completely. I didn't mind this, the curve. S23 Ultra had an okay curve. No issue. I like the fact that they flattened it out. Whenever I have a pen input device or a stylus device, I want to be able to use most of the screen as I try to pull it from the side that I'm used to on the Note 9 and whatever else. I want to be able to use the entire display. And the problem became always with the Note 9 specifically, because that's a steeper waterfall, is that you get to the end and you kind of roll off. So you can have your curve on the S23, uh, S24 Plus. You want it on the regular one, that's fine. Go ahead. Those devices have always been like that. They're, they're kind of the spiritual successors of the old Galaxy S devices of the past. But the Note variant, the S24 Ultra, should have a flat display. That way we could go ahead and write on there the entire display, circle stuff, get to right to the edge of that, be able to highlight things without any sort of issue. So big things basically coming. Camera improvements, yes, but it's going to be AI. It's all going to be AI. You're going to see they'll, they'll spend some time on it, but I guarantee a lot of the presentation if it is on the camera, will be on how the AI enhancements are going to help the camera, where it's going to remove graininess from the video. There's going to be all types of different things. Live translate. So for the first time, it'll be interesting to see Samsung try to get away from the hardware stuff because they always were able to kind of pound their chest and beat their chest. Yeah, we got the best hardware. Yeah, sure, we charge you a million dollars, but we got the best hardware by far. It'll be interesting to see Samsung now have to kind of switch gears and say, well, you know what? We've always had really good software. Well, the last two, three years. We've had really good software. Now we got to highlight it. Now we got to highlight software features. And it's going to be a lot more like a Google presentation, which is going to be awkward. It's going to be a little weird. But that's really where Samsung has to differentiate these devices if they want to sell them and justify this kind of price. Because the battlefield of the cameras is, is over with. We left that. It's gone. Now you're going to see AI features be the things that separate these phones and justify as companies struggle to justify $1,200 flagship. Because last year, if you noticed, last year, 2023 specifically, was a phenomenal year for the budget and mid-range devices. And even if a device didn't start its life as a budget device, there were a lot of phones, like the Motorola Think Phone that we had on the channel, that ended their life basically as, as budget devices. $399, something like a Think Phone, gave you all the power you could want. Great build quality. Decent software support now with the bi-monthly updates for Motorola. Lots of different great stuff that Motorola offered with the Think Phone. Now... Companies like Samsung that will still want to charge $1,200 for these devices are going to have to come up with something extra. There's going to have to be more than just a fancy display and a premium build quality and Victus uh, 27 on the front of it to en enable to uh, charge the money that they're charging. So it'll be interesting to see if they're able to kind of justify that revenue, if they're able to generate that value through AI, what they come up with. It should be interesting to see how that competes with Google's ecosystem AI-wise. All of it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun year for smartphones. It's going to be a really fun year. I think it's even a better year for budget phones. So if you're looking not to spend $1,200 anymore, because that was, if there was a theme to my comments in 2023, I don't know how many X thousands of comments that I got last year. The theme was why I do not, I will no longer spend a thousand plus dollars on a smartphone. And it was really hard to disagree with that, given what we saw on smartphones. So Samsung's, they're not dumb. They heard that. They're sitting there to listen to this stuff. Well, hold on now. There's always going to be people that are going to want this device regardless. But how do we keep the casuals involved? How do we keep the people just walking into the phone store or watching a video and saying, wow, all these people using five, dollars $600 phones getting a heck of a lot of value out of it. How do we entice them back into the mix and get them spending $1,200 plus on a phone? That's what the S24 Ultra presentation is going to be all about. It's going to be interesting. Like I said, click the link in the description. Save as much money as you can because you can you got to try as best you can to save those dollars. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.